Hey, welcome to a quick look at the Bentwood Vertical 63. Let's get into it. Okay, so the Bentwood Vertical 63, absolutely gorgeous. Also absolutely huge. Uh, weighs as much as 17 tanks. It is a freaking beast. Um, I, I can't prove this with science, but I'm pretty sure if the nuclear apocalypse happened, nukes went off everywhere, these things would still be just scattered around the globe. A little charred, but mostly perfectly fine. This is one of the beefiest grinders I have ever used. Um, but let's talk about it a little bit. So it is a fantastic grinder. It is an effort to put together all people's favorite features. It is fast, it is consistent. It has 63 millimeter flat burrs. The flavor profile is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's not gonna give up on you. I mean, it's just, it's an incredible grinder. However, the price tag, in my opinion, is ridiculous. Uh, this thing right now is listed at $2,700 which is absolutely insane. And listen, I know we own a coffee company, but we're not like rolling in the dough back here to where we can just drop $2,700 on a grinder. Um, and I'm assuming that many of you guys watching can't either. So I, I get that. Um, if you do have the money, if money's no question, if you're a business, if you're looking for like a commercial grinder that's just gonna go, 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 maybe look at this grinder. Um, if you're gonna spend almost three grand tomorrow and not feel bad about it in the slightest, then dude, this checks a lot of the boxes for an incredible grinder. But more than likely, you don't have three grand just to kind of blow on a coffee grinder. And there's, that's okay, that there's other grinders in this sphere that do very similar things. So today I wanna to kind of talk a little bit about what the sacrifices are with this, um, what the benefits are, and some other grinders that are comparable in that same range. So uh, really, you don't sacrifice on speed. Speed is fantastic on this. You don't sacrifice on grind quality. Um, you also don't sacrifice on noise. It's very, very quiet, this grinder. What you do sacrifice is size, weight, and price. So price through the roof, space, there's really no way this thing's fitting under kitchen cabinets. Um, and then weight, man, it is so heavy, um, which also increases shipping costs, which maybe that's why it's so expensive to buy. The flavor of the espresso that this produces is incredible. It's, it's really, really good. I just, I can't get my head around that price tag, man. Um, but it's a great grinder, and if you have the money to spend, I, I think you'll enjoy it. So let's talk about the use cases that I've really enjoyed this for. So we have some friends that we'll sell coffee beans to, but they don't have grinders at home. We're working on it, don't worry. Um, so they'll bring us kind of bags of beans or they'll buy from us bags of whole bean coffee and we'll grind it up for them. So this actually works great for that because we're able to put a bag of beans in there, 12 ounces of coffee, put it at the right setting for however they're gonna brew it at home, whether that be French press or whether that be pour over or whatever it is. And we're able to grind it into that bag incredibly quick and it's not super loud, um, consistent, great. Um, that works really well, great for pour overs. Um, great for French press. It really does move pretty quickly and easily back and forth to those different positions. Um, I have found, I will say, I have found that the anti-static does not work great, especially if you're grinding a lot of coffee all at once. So for little batches, it's fine. You grind it, you tap this thing out a little bit, and then it falls down. But if you keep grinding for a while, it does kind of get clogged up in that chute a little bit. I think not enough to where it would back up into the motors, but enough to where like it'll kind of fill up and then clump down and fill up and clump down. Um, so I was a little disappointed with that. Um, but overall, it is a beautiful, solid workhorse that, like I said, I think will last you a very, very, very long time. Um, so that was it. There's our quick look at the Bentwood Vertical 63. Uh, do you think we should pull a shot from it? Let's see. I think we should. So the coffee we're using today is the Trident Dreadnought. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put 20 grams in. And there we go. 19.6. Up. So we're going to come over here and we're going to start grinding here. Boom. And this can go right into your portafilter normally. There we go. And stop. Knock this off a little bit. Like I said, the anti static, it does not work great. I mean, there's still a little bit on there. Um, a little bit caught in there. If you give it a few taps, it should be good. And our output, 19.5. So that is pretty low retention. Um, it's not zero retention. I know who you are. Um, it, it's very, very low retention, um, but it, it's very good. I think some of it's probably still up here in the static as you see it falling off. Some of it may have gone off into the air. Who knows? 
Now let's go ahead and pull a shot. I'm gonna get everything ready. You guys can listen to this lovely music for a little while and then we'll come back and see how it goes. So I realized while I was pulling that shot when it was pulling a little bit fast, I'm like, wait a second. I did show how the grind rings move while I was doing that little demo. So I think I messed up the dial in that we did earlier, but it's still within drinkable range. Um, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Ooh, I need a little tasting spoon. Okay, give this a quick stir. Make sure it's not gonna scald my mouth. A little harsher on the nose than I would like. A little, a little sourness, but it's balancing out as the crema comes. Ooh. Man, it's crazy. It almost has melon notes like hiding up at the top, but it tastes like I've already added chocolate into it. It's so good. I mean, this is not a review of this coffee. This coffee is really good, you should try it. But the grinder definitely brings out the most flavor in it. Um, I've used this on a couple other grinders and it's still good, but it doesn't have nearly the depth of flavor, the complexities, you're not getting quite as much of that consistency. Um, with a grinder that grinds unevenly, you're gonna have some over extracted, some under extracted. With this, you really do that, get that consistency to where um, you still have to dial in, but you're gonna be consistent wherever you're at. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to dial in because you know if you're under extracting or over extracting. Man, that is balanced. Yeah, delicious. So, should you buy it? Like I said, if you have the money and it's not gonna hurt you at all, go for it. But if you're looking for something a little more budget friendly that still has incredible results, um, man, there's two grinders that do different parts of what this does incredibly well, but just not together. So um, in more of a form factor that's gonna sit on your kitchen cabinet, the Baratza Sete 270 um, is incredibly fast, incredibly consistent, produces light, fluffy grinds that are fan fantastic, small form factor, great grinder, we loved it, we used it for years, workhorse, but it's so loud. Like if you live with roommates, like you'll wake them up every morning. It's an incredibly loud grinder, um, but it's fast, it's consistent, it's fluffy, it's great. It's just not quiet like this one. It is fast, but it's not quiet. Then you have other grinders that we recommend like the Malconic X54, which is what we use every single day. Um, that one is not fast, right? So where the sete might take about four or five seconds to get your 18 gram, 20 gram shot, the Malcona is gonna be looking at 15, 16. So it's not a huge difference, but it's not fast, but it's quiet. It's incredibly quiet. Not as near silent as this one. This one's got like all that beefy insulation, all that stuff, but enough to where your morning coffees aren't gonna sound like you're starting a train or a monster truck in the living room. That one's a little bit more expensive than the Sete, but definitely more reasonable than kind of $2,700. So these are more home machines. If you are a commercial coffee company, I don't know that these would necessarily help um, keep up with the demand every single day. We use our sete for a lot of different pop-up coffee bars and it worked great. And we use the Malconic almost every day, but we're not a coffee shop. So definitely, this Bentwood is definitely a commercial grinder, definitely beefy, definitely strong, definitely beautiful, love the design. Folks, that's all I have to say on this matter. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you. We want to provide value to you guys as we know entering into the world of what should I buy next. Um, can be very difficult. Um, we're always happy to help out. If you visit us at image.coffee or leave a comment down below, we'd love to connect with you, um, help you figure out where you need to go, kind of how, what kind of coffee gear you might be looking into next. Um, we'd love to help you out. So you can go to image.coffee, start a chat with us there, um, check out our site, see all the other stuff that we sell, see what we're up to. Um, stay tuned for more videos like this. We want to continue to post um, as much as we know, provide value to you guys and uh, just let you know about who we are and what we're doing. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any thoughts, comments, if you own one of these, if you want one of these, if you are no longer buying one of these, um, just let us know what you think. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.